So, of course, I don't need TDD, right? Okay. Um, tired? Can people stretch a bit, please, after lunch? Thank you. Good, okay. So, um, I'll start with a public service announcement that people who don't write tests write good code also. Everyone in this room is in the blue circle, right? The only difference is whether you are blue with a bit of green or blue with a bit of brown. So I don't like the TDD community at all. I come from the Ruby community, and uh, honestly, TDD community is a bit suffocating. Okay, they do this, right? <laughs> change, change. No, no. Okay, they are. Yeah, you you feel the same way? Yes, yes. yes. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> so. They are irritating, they shame people. They, most of all, they don't have your deadline, right? They don't have a deadline. And they, then they will tell you, they come to your desk and say, you, you don't write tests? Oh, but tests give you confidence to refactor. I don't have a confidence problem, right? <laughs> it helps you write better design API. My API is well designed, thank you very much. So as documentation, I have documentation. My commit code is awesome, right? Uh, and this one, I like this one the best. Untested code is legacy code. Untested test is legacy code too. Okay. Um, so, but don't listen to me, right? So, what does what does God say? God say regression testing. What is that? Okay. If it compiles, it's good. If it boots up, it's perfect. Okay. So the TDD community do not understand that. Um, we, can I say we, like including you guys? We love code too. We agonize and refactor. We write our good commit messages. We link GitHub issues to pull requests to pivotal tracking, all sorts of things. So whatever they say about tests, uh, all these things, I have another principle which is as good. Uh, and it's called, you ain't going to need it. right? So then don't do it. And these are actually not my problems when I code. These are, these are not my problems. The other god said uh, that he get paid for code that works, not for tests. So <laughs> the common thing between me and this other god is that we want to get shit done. Oh, I said the word, sorry. Mm. <laughs> we want to get things done. Okay? What does getting things done mean? It means two things. You split it up, you get something to be done, and then you do it. It's very simple. I do test is not inside here. Right. Okay. Ah, okay. So. <laughs> okay, good. So to break that down a bit more, this is requirement and that's machinery. Machinery make things happen. Okay? This is this is the the, the easy part, the technical knowledge. You learn, you read the docs, you uh, ten thousand hours of YouTube videos. You watch it, you can good at it, right? And then the other part is requirements. This is where constipation happens. Um, th now, this is the problem because uh, requirement, even if it comes from yourself or you are the startup founder, what you want to do can be very uh, hand wavy, changes from time to time. Hey, Google just launched this, or them switch to another product, or things like that. So, so this is the problem, the requirements. So far, so good? OK, good. Yes? Mm. If you don't agree with me, um, maybe you shake your head or something. Okay. Okay. So, um, so with this background where I don't like the TDD folks and stuff, uh, I did go for an interesting job interview. And they required me to do pair programming for half a day doing TDD. Sounds good, right? But, uh, but I did leave the interview uh, being pleasantly surprised how I liked it. I had, so there was a bit of a cognitive dissonance. Why do I like it? I don't like this thing, right? But I actually enjoyed the interview. It's very nice. Um, I couldn't explain it to myself. It took me a while until I hit my 10,000 video that I watched, where I learned uh, this Ryan Bates. He was talking about something, and he just had a throwaway comment. This is not the main point of his video, but he just had made this comment, which made me do the rewind 30 seconds thing. 
So I really like this approach of testing. It just walks you through what's next step I have to do to get it working. Uh, notice that there's no benefits of tests here. It's not about refactoring, getting a better design. This is essentially about getting things done, approach to next step to get it working. So hey, this speaks to me. All those benefits doesn't speak to me. I never write tests before. I did bug-driven development. If there's a bug, I solve the bug. <laughs> so, okay. so, but th this speaks to me. It's like, OK, I, I get it. This is interesting. So if you look at the machinery and requirements again, uh, machinery, make sure it happens. We know that. Go and watch your screencast. Master your tools. We can solve this. Requirements, harder to solve, right? And if it's hand wavy, just, um, just write it down. But what's better than writing it down in English is write it in code. And requirements change because suddenly this guy launched a new product. You have to change direction. Your startup pivot again. So what do you do with changing requirements? You version control it. Version control code requirement sounds a bit familiar now, right? So this is it's actually test, by the way. So um, this is how I imagine it. I don't, I don't play golf. This is my imagination of golf. First, there is a requirement. You plant a flag right there. And then um, you plant a flag before you even reach for your machinery to do it. right? And then you choose. Maybe I'll take the tree wood for this one. And then the mechanism delivers towards your requirement. Should that bad sales guy come and change your requirement, then it's OK. It's OK. Just move the flag. Just move the flag, and then work your mechanism toward it again. Okay. So back to the job interview. So what did we do in the half day of TDD? Uh, the, it's actually very menial code. Just, we're working on the production system, doing some stuff. Um, but let's think through what uh, we are doing if we were doing it normally. What, how we are doing it normally, right? Okay. So uh, first, you, the point is to change, let the user change his email address, sends the email and confirms the link. So you would create a change email page, and then open up the browser, log in, the page is there. You add a field, let them change. Oh, if there's an error, maybe I should throw an error. Reload again, and then you change it. OK, good. Send it. Oh, my email should have a link for them to click on. And then do it again, and then copy the link, put it in the browser. Oh, now I need the new endpoint to handle this change email confirmation. OK, handle it. And then um, I need to set my email address to the new one. OK, set it. OK, after reloading your browser for like 20 times, and hey, you got it working. Or did you? You're not sure. Like, OK, maybe I, I try a few more times, right? So that, that's what we do, but it works. I know deploy to production, and that's how, how I usually do it last time. But um, now I do it in TDD manner. So how do I do it in TDD manner? Even simpler. Hey, some code. Okay. So there's nothing on this side. You have tests, and Go makes it super simple by putting things side by side with the underscore tests. So just go ahead and describe, ah, what do I need? I need an old email address. I need a new email address. And I have some error that I expect. And then you have a boilerplate to loop through your scenarios. I didn't, this is how I actually do it. So I don't bother to put the scenarios first. First, I know my inputs and outputs. And OK, I'm going to loop through all of them. And I'll set up the scenario. First, I have a user with the email address. And then I'm going to handle this change email address request. There's a bug, by the way, but it doesn't matter. Uh, next. I expect the error message to match the error message in my scenario in the table above. Fine. And then I would like to check that I actually send the email to the correct person and not his old email address. Then I verify that the database, because we have just sent the email out, so we, have to, we verify that the email in the database is still the old one and that there's a link that I can visit. After visiting the link, I check that the email address in the database has changed. Uh, all this code is all error, by the way. There's nothing on this side, right? It's all errors. And then I'll think about scenarios. OK, maybe I have a foo change to a bar. And then I have a foo change to a wrong. And then maybe I should get an error message. And yeah, OK, add one more, a foo change to a foo, and different error message. And I'm done, right? Perfect. And then you run it. 
what do you get? Cool. Yeah. So at this point, you'll be like, ah, oh, sucks. But no, this is actually good news because you, once you get this thing, you can go for lunch, right? This is <laughs> if, if you do not know the getting things done tip of the day, always leave unfinished work. Close your laptop and go home. And then, in the, in the next morning, when you come back, open your laptop, you know exactly where you left off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So, so you can go for your ramen, blah, blah, blah. You talk about things and ha, ha, ha. You come back. I need to write a function that gets an address from a mail. As I'm writing the function, the whole requirement is coming back to my head. I'm loading the stack in a different code, go routine, and I'm writing my code in the go routine, right? <laughs> And then, as I'm doing it halfway, I, 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 let's say I fix that, fix that problem. And then pager duty rings. Oh, what, what's going on? Or the building that you're in has a fire drill. Or um, if you're like me, when I was working at home, then the baby cries in the next door. Then you have to drop everything and go. Right? And then you go and you lose track again. Oh, where am I? That's your problem. I don't have the problem because I can go back and look at this error. <laughs> 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 So next thing, address from DB or visit link from, I just have to solve the next thing. So it's very simple. It is the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. If someone calls, change requirement, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. It's very simple. And then you get a nice green pass. Chip trail, what's a pass? Pass means you are done. And this one I inspired by yesterday's workshop. Pass means done. And the famous fictional character said before, you solve one problem, and then you solve the next, and then you solve the next. And when you solve enough problems, you get to go home. I like this one. I didn't use his photo because I don't know about copyrights. <laughs> so um, this is a relatively short talk. So the point to the, the title is TDD for people who don't need it. So it may be you, it may be your colleague, or you have been trying to, maybe there are TDD folks hiding here. <laughs> but they have failed to spread the gospel. Like, why is this guy not listening to me? They still don't write tests. So what I'm trying to say is that don't talk about the benefit of tests. Talk about getting things done. The person you're talking to probably cares about code more than you. Right? And for those who are maybe coming around to, hmm, maybe I should check this thing out. Don't worry, get it, just get started. Don't be distracted by this one, right? Okay? <laughs> don't worry about testing it right. Don't worry about testing all the things. Don't worry about throwing away code. Don't worry about which test library to use. By the way, in Go, don't use any. The standard library is awesome. Um, should I mock, should I start, should I factory? Actually, I don't know and I don't care. The most important thing is that you should just Starts writing code, right? Yeah. Mm, good. Ah, the GIF works. Okay. So the end. Thank you. Uh, a any questions or objections? Uh, everybody agree. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.